What's up my friends, welcome back. You're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and today for you guys, I'm checking out Sigma's unique 20mm f1.4 art lens for video use. As always, this is an unsponsored video and I bought the lens with my own cash, so buckle up for a warts and all review from a videographer's perspective. Roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, links to this lens plus any other relevant videos I've linked in the description box below. Definitely get yourself subscribed for more like this and if you do enjoy this free content please let me know by leaving me a like. So what is this weird lens? Well a weird lens it is. It's a 20mm prime lens with a huge f1.4 max aperture for full frame cameras. And the headline when it was first released was, this lens is a real winner for astrophotography. So admittedly, I didn't pay this lens much attention when it first came out, because I'm a, I'm a video guy. It comes with its own case, it has a very bulbous front element, it has a fixed lens hood, and therefore has a slide on, slide off kind of lens cap. So if it's an astrophotographer's lens, why on earth, get it, did I buy it? Well, it happens to be, almost exactly the same focal length as I've been using for this angle. Uh, if you're wondering, the lens I was using before is the Canon 16-35 f4 IS lens at around 20 millimeters. That is a wonderful lens too, I'm not knocking it. It's sharp as hell, the focusing is brilliant, it's versatile, and the IS on that lens is about the best I've tried from any lens. The only thing I didn't like about that lens was the fact that it had a max aperture of f4, so with this new Sigma, I'm sacrificing the amazing image stabilization and the versatility, the fact that it was a zoom lens, in exchange for an amazing wide aperture of f1.4, plus possibly even better image quality, but we will see. Let's run through the features now. The feature that I imagine is most likely to make lens enthusiasts weak at the knees has got to be that large f1.4 max aperture but bear in mind, this is coming from a videographer's point of view, so the light transmission, that T-stop, is actually 1.8. Now, I suspect the reason that that T-stop number isn't closer to the F-stop number is because when this lens is wide open, you do get quite a bit of vignetting around the edges. It definitely would have been a difficult lens to design, and avoiding this kind of thing would have been especially taxing. Speaking of lens design, it has 15 elements in 11 groups, and of course it has a very large bulbous front element, which means of course you can't put filters on the front of your lens. This is a pretty big problem if you want to go and shoot outdoors and you don't have built-in ND filters and you want to use an aperture higher than insert number here. To tackle this problem, I picked up a Photodeox ND Throttle Smart Adapter, which has an ND filter built into it, which is just an incredible idea but it's a far from perfect product and I, I may do a video about, about my experiences with it and definitely let me know if you would like to see that. Anyway, it also has a large and beautifully smooth focus ring, which of course I love, but that's more on the subject of build quality. So let's talk about that now. How is the build quality? This lens, and in my opinion, the entire Sigma Art series are stunningly designed. I think they're beautifully made, with amazing materials and I think honestly they rival the top end glass from any other manufacturer without going into cine lens territory. The bulbous front element of course means that the lens hood is fixed and the lens cap just snugly fits over it. This is kind of a weird thing to say but that is a particularly nice lens cap. I already mentioned how lovely, smooth and quiet that focus ring is and the lens mount itself is metal as it should be for a lens of this kind of price. However, it doesn't have the rubber sealing gasket, so this is not a weather sealed lens. Just bear that in mind. My last criticism of a product that is largely brilliantly made is actually one of the entire art series, and it's the matte finish on the barrel. It, whilst it looks fantastic when it's new, it is really easily scratched, and that's just kind of annoying. All you can do is look after them and just enjoy using them. After all, what really matters is optical quality and performance for video, which we'll talk about now. So, good. This lens's sweet spot is actually at f2.8, 
which is kind of a shame because I'm either <laughs> wide open, getting dreamy looking shots at f1.4, or I'll stop it down significantly to get more depth of field. When you've got this lens at f1.4, you may notice a little bit of vignetting, which personally I love. So I actually add vignetting afterwards, so this suits me fine. I tested how well this lens deals with flaring, and for a lens that has a protruding front element, I found it to be amazingly controlled and with barely any loss of contrast. You may notice a small amount of chromatic aberration in the contrasty areas, but it's kind of to be expected and really it's very well controlled. It's only really when you've got the lens wide open and um, it's barely noticeable. I found the bokeh balls and out of focus areas to be especially beautiful. The bokeh balls reminding me of the defined edge type you get from expensive cine lenses. They also stay lovely and round as you stop down, which is due to the nine aperture blades. But what about lens breathing? If you're unfamiliar with the term lens breathing, this is where your field of view can actually change when you move your focus point. As you can see here, I'm going from closest focus to infinity, and you can see our field of view is changing slightly. But I do want to preface this by saying that I don't think a little bit of lens breathing matters that much when you're dealing with a lens like this that has such shallow depth of field when wide open. So now I've stopped the lens down all the way to f16, so hopefully you can see a more accurate example of how much lens breathing you actually get with this lens? Answer, not much at all, it's really well controlled. And now this is the Canon 16-35 at 20mm and you can see the difference is profound. There is an amazing amount of lens breathing and I actually can't quite believe it, not to mention the massive difference in light transmission as well. Now I'm sure this is because the 16-35 is also a zoom lens and it's got optical image stabilisation so it's having to do a lot of things internally and I'm sure that lens breathing wasn't at the top of Canon's list of things to nail for this lens. Looking at them side by side it further that illustrates the difference you can see. I also noticed quite a noticeable difference in distortion, again the Sigma being far superior of the two. I found this lens to be impressively sharp across the aperture range, as I found with basically all of the Sigma art range, but I just want to stress how much more important aesthetic is than sharpness. And what an amazing aesthetic you get with this lens. People sometimes talk about that 3D look that you can get. And this lens gives you the 3D look by the bucket load. Let me show you a few clips to demonstrate. a very high resolution sensor to resolve the potential detail this lens can give you. You also need a very sharp lens to resolve the detail that a high resolution sensor can give you. What I'm saying is if you're a professional photographer, sure, you want to know about sharpness, but with videography, I feel like the aesthetic, you know, the field of view, the depth of field, the out of focus areas are far more important than how sharp the lens is. Some videographers even prefer a softer lens because it's more flattering on skin tones. Let me show you what I mean. This completely gripping shot was shot with the Canon 24-70 f4 IS at around 58mm and the reason I did it is because I want to zoom into the grille on the front of that video micro by Rode. Switching lenses now, I'm now using the Helos 58mm f2 which was made in 1984. Of course it's an old fashioned lens, it doesn't have all of the fancy coatings and all of that kind of stuff that modern lenses have. And when I zoom into 300% you can see, aside from the obvious difference in contrast, there is a really noticeable difference in detail. There's no right or wrong of course, it's just down to preference. I should note that both of these lenses are stopped down to around 5.6 to 6.3 and this is the Helios at its absolute sharpest. This lens at f2 is incredibly soft and dreamy. So why would you use the Helios for video? Well, because of that really interesting aesthetic that it gives you. So how does it compare to the wide angle zoom I was using before? For now, let's just ignore all of the obvious differences and, and just focus on image quality. So here's the Sigma 20mm at f4, nicely stopped down a little bit. It's beautifully sharp, 
Any vignetting that you're seeing is actually more down to the top-down lighting setup that I've got. And then switching to the Canon 16-35 f4, at f4 you can see that there's a noticeable difference in light transmission for one, there is noticeable vignetting, and that's mainly because the Sigma at f4 is stopped down so it's near to its optimum aperture, whereas the Canon at f4 is wide open. Looking at them side by side, you can see the Canon is noticeably darker with that extra vignette, and it's noticeably cooler, whereas the Sigma is brighter and warmer. Zooming into 300%, I really can't tell much difference in terms of sharpness. We already know they are both very, very sharp modern lenses. However, now let's tip the scales. This is the Sigma at f1.4. It looks gorgeous. Look at that shallow depth of field. The out of focus area is stunning. And then if I keep everything the same, my camera settings, the lighting, everything like that, and just swap to the Canon and have it wide open at f4, this is the amount of light that you lose. That's three full stops of extra noise, plus we've lost our gorgeous out of focus background. I'll say it again, the Canon is an amazing lens, but in terms of aesthetic, the Sigma has it beaten and then some. Now for the pros and cons, and I'll start with the cons. Firstly, this lens doesn't have image stabilization and neither does most of the art series. And I understand why, because it can compromise image quality, but I like IS but I get it. There's also small, very small amounts of chromatic aberration, which you simply cannot correct in post. But I guess, what can you do? Just don't worry about it. It's not very noticeable. That bulbous front element, whilst beautiful, is kind of a pain because if you want to add filters of any type, you either have to buy a matte box or you can just do what I did and get one of those adapters with the built-in ND filters. This is a heavy lens, which is not that surprising. I mean, come on, f1.4, 20 millimeters. So it weighs 950 grams, or for my American friends, just over two pounds. Heavy. As for the pros, the image quality is simply wonderful. It gives you that 3D look and that kind of cinema lens reminiscent bokeh balls and just tons of detail, tons of contrast. I had just a couple of minute build quality complaints, but I would say it's on par with the rest of the art series. I'd also say this is a good value lens. It's certainly not a cheap lens, but for the results it gives you, that unique look, that kind of unique aesthetic, and it's such a professional bit of gear, I'd say it's worth it. And finally, my opinion, and I don't think this is gonna be a particularly popular lens, because it's a strange focal length to own, for a prime lens, but I would urge you to consider it because of all the pros that I just mentioned. I've never tried anything like it, and to be honest, since I got it, I haven't wanted to use any other lens. In the past, I found shooting video with a wide angle to be less rewarding, but with this lens, I'm just blown away by the footage every time, and it's just become so fun. And that's it for now. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Of course, I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this top video for you, and the one below is my latest release. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.